before we get started, Rick, I'd like to call up um, Mr. Dawson to to just give blessing for all all the good things we have in Ascension Parish. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise for all that you do for us. And during this stringent time, we thank you for the strength, for the endurance of all of those that are helped. We pray that for those, the victims of this, this flood in all the parishes, that by your grace and by your power, that you touch every need that they may have. We pray for our governor. We pray for our all the state elected officials. We pray for the parishes affected and all of those that are elected to serve. Because your word said, if you want to be great in your kingdom, you must be a servant at all. We thank you for the opportunity to serve the people. We pray for your wisdom and guidance as we move forward and for our continued strength as you see us through this endeavor. Not only through the height of the t catastrophe itself, but through the recovery and as we move on. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Governor, on behalf of Ascension Parish, thank you for coming down. We know this is your second visit, and it's, it's really important to us that, uh, that, that, that you came down here to check the status on where we're at. We thank you. If we could, if we can take a minute or two, this is the briefing from the Unified Command, and I'll briefly go over this with you. And feel free to stop me if you have any questions along the way. And we still have some uh, areas of significant impact to Ascension Parish, primarily Port Vincent, Summerfield, Santa Mar, AC, the Galvez area, the center section of Gonzales. And we have some preliminary reports for damage assessment. Uh, this, was, this was compiled by our GIS department. Uh, we have 56,210 homes in Ascension Parish, and right now estimated for damage assessment with the whole spectrum of damage, we're looking at uh, impacted, minor damage, major damage, and destroy. That runs that whole spectrum. We're looking at uh, about 19,642 homes in the risk area. So again, it's gonna run that entire spectrum of damage that we have throughout it. Uh, good trending in the rivers right now, Governor. We're looking at 14.2 feet at, at Port Vincent, which is the gauge that we use uh, to measure the, the, the water that's moving out of the parish. Already crested in French settlement and it's trending downwards, so that's really important to us when, as, as the water moves out of the parish. No major weather systems that's gonna come in and affect operations right now. Transportation and evacuations. Uh, we still have voluntary evacuations in the low-lying areas of the parish, even though the water is all receding. Uh, but we're still in pretty good shape right now, which is telling the residents to heed all the protective action statements and pay attention to the first responding agencies throughout the parish. Airline highway between Sorrento and I-10 was closed as of about noon today. I-10 through the parish is open. LA Highway 22 is open. Uh, highway 30 east of Papera is closed. Highway 44 through Ascension is open. Uh, and again, I mentioned the voluntary evacuations. Uh, communications, alerts, and warning, we just tell our, our residents to call 911 if they do have an emergency. We do have other, other means for them to contact us to get uh, just critical information on the, uh, on the incident so it would reduce the impact from our 911 center. Uh, DPW and drainage crews are still working around the clock. Uh, they're still moving barricades to, for, that's impacted our transportation infrastructure. Marvin Bro pumping station, is still operational, and, and as you, you mentioned earlier, we did open up the Laurel Ridge levee, and that, that's been a substantial impact. It's not the only factor, but it's been a substantial impact on getting some of the water out of the parish a little bit quicker. Uh, that water is moving into um, the McElroy Swamp and then ultimately into Lake Marpa. Our fire services, we still have uh, all of our, our fire services intact. Uh, in, in the Santa Mar area, they lost three of their fire stations. They were able to get their apparatus completely out of the area before the water came in. Uh, Santa Mar residents still have fire and EMS services, uh, but they're just operating out of an alternate location. Our emergency operations center is still fully activated. Uh, we're being augmented by state agencies, uh, Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fish Fisheries, state police, uh, the state fire marshal's office in GOSEP, and we appreciate that support. Uh, sheltering at, in mass care at Lamar Dixon Expo Center, we're looking at 783 people, and it's, it's, it's approaching 800, 800 by now. It's already exceeded the capacity that we had during Katrina. Uh, and, and, and so if you get a chance to visit it, it's, it's amazing to see uh, all the resources and, and, and time from volunteers that, that help get the shelter up and running is, is really amazing. So 
If you get an opportunity to visit, uh, I'd highly recommend that you do so. Medical, uh, St. Elizabeth Hospital, Prevost Hospital wasn't uh, impacted by high water. It, they're still operational. And the St. Elizabeth staff has coordinated extremely well with us and they're located at the shelter right now, uh, caring for any of the residents that we do have there. Search and rescue operations, have, have, they're on standby, you know, if, they, if they've needed, uh, but it's, it's continuing to slow down. Uh, the Central Parish Sheriff's Office and our fire services are being augmented by the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and the Louisiana National Guard. Uh, petrochemical sector, well, we've got about 33 manufacturers and storage facilities in the parish. Uh, most of them have either reduced production or they or they've stopped production, and they just want everybody to know that all their feedstock and all their finished goods are secure. Companion animals, it's a pretty large operation right now, what's going on at Lamar Dixon. Uh, over 700 animals, including livestock, that are at Lamar Dixon. Karis House, which is a private nonprofit in the parish that began running it, uh, managed also by Ascension Parish Government, uh, LSART, and LSU uh, uh, School of Veterinary Medicine, and in addition to the Department of Agriculture is assisting us there. We have all the resources I believe that we need to manage it. It's going fairly well, <coughs> really well, in fact. If you want to see that operation also, sir, uh, they donated all of the resources we need, all the food, all the cages, everything is in place. Drinking water, uh, the city of Gonzales, uh, ACUD1, which is another uh, water company within a parish and Baton Rouge Water Company. The drinking water supply is safe. Uh, however, however, the Baton Rouge Water Company is predicting to do a ball water advisory in the Santa Ma and Lake Martin areas of the parish within the next 24 hours. Residents were advising residents that have private wells or well waters to take precautions. There's no, no orders out yet, but we're just advising them to take precautions. And as far as law enforcement goes, sir, I'd like to be followed by uh, Colonel Weber to kind of give you an overview of what's happening in law enforcement within Ascension Parish. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. Governor, welcome. I'll try not to repeat anything uh, my brother said, so keep this brief. But uh, as we see this high water receding, Governor, uh, we think that our mission is going to make a transition. Actually, we're starting a transition today. Uh, our patrol and special ops will transition from that rescue or relocating a lot of residents from uh, high water areas to dry ground. Now that's a really a, a minimal operation, and what we'll do now, we think our critical need, our critical mission will be to uh, protect property and, and safety. So we do have all of our uh, patrol shifts running double now, and in addition to our patrol shifts running double, we're going to have a contingent of deputies in high water vehicles that will patrol the high water areas protecting people's asset. Uh, obviously, we will be out there starting uh, this afternoon or relocating one of our uh, mobile command uh, uh, command centers in a centrally located area that will get us to uh, both the, uh, the Galvez area and the San Amon and Sorrento area in about the same amount of time. So we will centrally locate uh, that command center there. And that's, that's the part of the parish that was affected uh, more than anywhere else. Now, we do realize we have some issues on, in the Bluff uh, and on Ridge Road, and we have contingencies for that place also. What we're finding out now, uh, Governor, is that uh, uh, some of the power companies, both gas and electricals, are trying to get out there uh, and turn on uh, the grid, trying to get a lot of electricity back on, and they're asking uh, for us to escort them in boats or whatever out to uh, areas that we can turn on uh, the electric. Uh, in addition to wildlife and fisheries helping us on the water, uh, Colonel, thank you so much for sending the troopers down here. We spoke to several of them last night helping us on the roadways, which gave us an opportunity to get out there and work in the, uh, in the high water area. So thanks for doing that. It's been great. Most of our uh, major highways now are open. We're certainly 10 and, and, and 61, and even some of our uh, major state roads are open, except for portions of Highway 30 uh, and Highway 22 near US 61. So things are improving every day. And the large majority of our parish roads, we had, as of last night, still probably 90 closed, but that uh, is uh, dwindling too. So it's looking really good uh, each and every day on roads. As you know, we, we did not have a, a formal curfew, and you know it's been, been lifted, Governor, and we thought that was a good idea because we knew now there will be an influx of residents and owners trying to get back to their uh, 
to see what kind of damage they have, and certainly we're going to assist them in any way we can. And as we said in our briefing this morning, we'll, our deputies that are our contingency of deputies that will be uh, in the high water areas, and, and those vehicles will stop and talk to the residents, verify their homes, and obviously if there's uh, people there that don't belong in that area, we will encourage them to leave, uh, and we will even investigate them as to why they're there. So we do have some plans for that. Uh, we're certainly going to be working uh, with the shelter. I know we have provided uh, uh, security for all the shelters, and I do know that you, uh, the parish government is going to transition into recovery when FEMA comes in, and certainly we'll do our part as, as maybe helping stand them up with security. So we think that is, uh, that's in place. We actually have a briefing going on right now to, uh, to start this transition. So without repeating anything. Uh, well, Colonel, before you, you, you said you, you're augmented now by the Sheriff's Task Force, right? Uh, no, sir. We, we took not? we took a additional deputies from our off shifts, okay. and, we, and we made another contingency to be into the high water areas. Okay, but you, you don't you, you don't have or don't need the task force, uh, and just to have a, a larger presence, maybe after dark, um, just just to kind of prevent uh, looting. But if you do, I think it's available. Mike Ronox is in here. Yeah, Mike's yes, here, and we, and we have been in constant contact okay. with just, you. Just, it, that, that's available to you. I know they're good. using it um, in, the, in a couple of other parishes and having some uh, uh, positive results from it. Uh, you, also, you have National Guard at Lamar Dixon, too, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I want, want to make sure of that. And do we have media in the room right now? Okay. Um, just want to share with you that, that – to your north, Livingston Parish has started their secondary search. Uh, they've got a USAR team. They're primarily in the Walker area, but they're, they're going to have to do the entire uh, parish for those uh, neighborhoods that, that took on water, just like y'all are going to have to do. Um, and they have searched 800 homes. 30 of them had people in them that had never asked for help, and nobody's talked to them since this happened. Uh, and of those 30 homes, there were about 52 people. I don't know if that's going to be representative of what's happening elsewhere, but it, it does tell you the importance of when we can to start the secondary search. Um, and to that uh, end, we have a USAR team that's going to be made available to you. Uh, this is what they do. Um, and I don't, I, I'm assuming, uh, Colonel Wascom, we've, we've told them to expect a USAR team. Well, we, we just have to have this coverage. Um, and, and I can speak to that one. Okay. And uh, when this team is searching, they have yet to have to force entry into a home because people are walking out with their doors open um, and, and, uh, or the, they're occupied. Um, so they haven't really had to break doors. They haven't had to break windows. Uh, but I will tell you that Livingston Parish found its first fatality when they started this search. Uh, and so we, we uh, in fact, that happened just a few minutes ago before this meeting started. So I'm, I'm just sharing that with you so that, so that uh, everybody understands the importance of doing that. Um, and, and, of course, for those people who, who may be trapped in their homes, and because it's typically the elderly and the frail who haven't gotten out, right? And so we, we need to, to be conscious of that and, and do that when we can. Um, and I think you were finished with the law enforcement part. Yes, sir. Is brother coming back up? <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he <laughs> no, uh, I know that uh, the other night when we were here, I asked Johnny Bradbury to come. I think he's done that, and, and y'all are working on some plan for additional pumping capacity, whether it's with what he can get or you may potentially using the Corps of Engineers. Has, did that... Did that conference bear any fruit, you it, think? It yes. did, sir. And if I could yeah. call Bill Rue up, our okay. brand new director, and he sure. can give we, you an idea. We appreciate you, Governor. He came back today and had a long talk with Bill and got okay. things lined up. Okay. Governor, uh, just to make it sure that everybody understands that Ascension Parish is a little bit different from uh, Livingston Parish and a couple other, Baton Rouge, and even St. James. The fact of the matter is uh, much of Ascension Parish is a levy pump system. Uh, the I think we at the end of the trying to lessen the severity of the uh, floodwaters entering homes. That's over with. The problem we have now is getting the water out of these basins. Now, again, we I liken this to New Orleans. Once it fills up, it's one thing, but to get it out, it's another thing. Uh, we have several basins that if we cannot 
One basin particularly is uh, the Spanish Lake Basin. That's a trapped basin that encomp encompasses uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of acres between us and Iberville Parish. There's only two outlets, two small covers, six by six coverts, that which I liken to a straw in a swimming pool. Uh, we'll never get this water out unless we pump it. This is something that Mr. Bradbury and I have been working on today. Uh, we have a plan together to activate and put pumps at uh, Alligator Bayou and try to uh, get this water out as quick as possible. Uh, that's our priority number one is Alligator Bayou and that basin. Priority number two is we have a pump system and a uh, levee system at Henderson Bayou, which is close to Port Vincent. Uh, that was overtopped and filled up. Uh, we're in the process now. We, in fact, we, we did an aerial uh, review of that uh, area uh, earlier today. It seems like the uh, overtopping of our levee system at that point has stopped. Uh, it, I think we will be able to begin pumping that area out Later today or by tomorrow or tonight, we're uh, going to the site. We finally had access to the site. We're going to check our equipment, and hopefully we can get that process working. It will help, and Mr. Bradbury and I talked about it. We're looking at adding additional pumps to that place, that our uh, existing pumping station, to get more water out in a, in a timely manner. Uh, the other main part of our system is the Marvin Bro pump system. And that's what drains all of the center port of Ascension Parish. 65% uh, of Ascension Parish goes to that one point, which is south of Sorrento. And we have uh, five pump, five 1,000 CFS pumps. Uh, they've all been operating. They never shut down. And we're continuing right now to pump. Problem is, the water on the inside is actually higher than the water on the outside. We have a uh, outflow uh, around the pumping station right now, but we continue to pump. Uh, it's not as efficient as possible, but it is providing some assistance in getting the water out. Uh, in the meantime, what we did, we, we provided a uh, breach uh, at a, another location in that uh, levee system to provide a, another source of relieving the pressure within our levee system. Uh, we did that manually last night, and, and we're actually enlarging that breach right now. And uh, this is something else that I talked to Mr. Bradbury about. We're going to have a plan in place for when we get this system down that we'll be able to stop that breach uh, fairly fast, fairly quickly, to, in case there's a system in the Gulf coming in, we can be pretty secure. Uh, so in a nutshell, we're working real close to Mr. Bradbury and, mm -hmm. and some of your people, and I think we have a pretty good plan in place. We're going to activate that. In fact, it's already been activated. Uh, I talked to... Uh, one of the contractors uh, under Mr. Bradbury, and they're going to the site at Furrow Bayou right now to see how they can gain access to it. Uh, that site, again, Furrow Bayou, is still overtopping the road from Bayou Manshack. As soon as that overtopping is completed, that's when we're going to mobilize, begin pumping operations to get the water out. Even with the biggest pumps that we can get, of this type, to, that can mobile pumps. We're still looking at a month or more of pumping to get this water out. It's that big of a basin. Um, again, we all of these areas are inundated. The, the water is at least halfway some of these houses, most of the houses, if not all the way up to the ridge uh, eaves. And if we, it, we're still looking at taking at least several weeks, if not a month or more to get it out of the house itself. And again, I liken the, the problems in New Orleans after Katrina. They just stayed there and, you know, it's getting out is a major problem. And that will be our major task over the next few weeks is to do that. To, to repair the levee breach that you mm -hmm. intentionally did and are now enlarging, are you anticipating using HESCO baskets? Yes. Some type of system where we, okay. helicopter system where we can lift, bring it in, Drop them in and provide some kind of protection. Them. Okay. And, yes. and we'll get with Mr. Bradbury and your folks to figure mm -hmm. out how many, and we'll, we'll be leaning forward to do that. Right. Uh, We're looking at tasks. We're going to probably have a staging area, an airline highway near the interstate south of Sorrento, where we have everything in place. Once we get our system down to a, a manageable level, we'll go ahead and uh, try to place these, uh, Hasco or whatever the system is, whatever we put there, we'll go ahead and put them in. 
while we engineering a system of uh, permanent repair. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that you might need that we can provide? Right now, again, we had a pretty good discussion with your people, Mr. Bradbury, and I think we have everything in place as of now to, to handle our main concern, which are these. Uh, things will crop up, and I, but I think we can uh, work with uh, the state to, to get what we need at that point. Thank you. I appreciate okay. anybody else with questions. Well, Governor, I just want to say uh, we appreciate the other night you sent the Calvary over to Sorrento to uh, do some sandbagging and saved a lot of houses. We appreciate that very much, and they do. The mayor of Sorrento, I don't know if he's here or not, but he appreciated it greatly. Thank you. Well, we, we, we've had a pretty good team effort in this. Obviously, um, the state partners are a small part of that. It's the, it's the local first responders under your leadership that, that really uh, have saved the day for those people. And not to say that everybody was uh, prevented from suffering any damage, and certainly we've had loss of life, but, but it's really been uh, the partnership that, that we've had with you all and quite frankly with our federal partners too that has made a big difference yes sir yes sir. and and we we haven't lost electrical power to a, a major big box real retail stores which is why we've chosen not to run our commodity pies because yeah. it, as long as i as our res residents can take care of their self and they can get to walmart they can get to the hardware stores and the big box retail stores it's well, great and we ask, we thank you for doing that because when you ask for a pod we look to see whether the lights are on at the uh, Walmart, and right. if they are, <laughs> we're going to probably tell you we can't do we the can't pot do it, right. because the Walmart doesn't appreciate that for right. one. Uh, but but really, the reason for a pot is to get commodities where they can't be obtained, right. and and so we, we we're, I'm glad that you did that. And they have reached out to us for use officers to do the secondary searches. Uh, we had a preliminary meeting with fire and we're going to get with our other partners in search and rescue sheriff's department I, I would encourage you to sit down with butch browning he wrote the the book in louisiana on how to do this years ago and he's leading the effort in livingston parish now they've already learned new lessons up there they're not breaking in many homes at all in fact they haven't broken into a single home but they've checked over 800 they're not marking them with spray paint they're marking them with chalk right uh, they're, do, they're doing th things differently, so I would encourage you to do that. And also stay, stay tight with uh, Colonel Wascom because we, we do have some USAR teams coming, and, and uh, we can either use a team that comes from out of state by integrating them into what you're going to do, or we can just send some more in-state people here. Yes, Whatever sir. works best for you all, I'm just going to ask you, don't wait too long, because in the back of my mind is the thought that that guy that they just found, had he been found yesterday, he might be in a, in a, in a hospital today, yes, uh, you know, or something. So, and, and, and we'll never know, but right. we just have to do this, as, I think, as quick, quickly as we can. You know, Governor, you do have a good man there. Your fire marshal was our fire chief for years and started a, under Mayor Johnny Breslot at the time as now representative, but he had a, a you saw a team uh, with the city of Gonzales, so he taught us a lot, but he's, he's told us he'll help us in any way possible. Anything else? And just real quickly, uh, Governor, in terms of long-term recovery, FEMA's already on the ground. We've got some teams registering for individual assistance. Uh, we've got a meeting with uh, disaster assistance on Friday. We're going to start uh, setting up a disaster recovery center so our, our residents can register for, for FEMA claims. Right, and I think we're about 70,000 uh, people that have registered statewide for uh, disaster assistance, which which is a big number this this. Um, close to the to the incident itself um, what, what, what I'd like to do now is give uh, Colonel I'm sorry General Curtis I've tried to demote you there uh, General Curtis an opportunity to make any comments or ask any questions that he might need so he leaves here with the information that's critical yes sir uh, no sir I just want to make sure you're getting what you need from us so if there's any, any Ma other Major Premack and everybody else has been absolutely fantastic we appreciate the support that you, you've given us at Lamar Dixon and sure. out throughout the rest of the parish okay well as we move forward you know if there's things that come up if, if commodities distribution come up we're ready um, you know if, if you need us to supplement some type of security uh, we can do that um, if you need some kind of support teams, you know, we call them governmental support teams that can help you plan, look into the future. I'm just kind of throwing things out. Yes, I, I, I would rather you just ask, and if you think you need something, ask, and let us try to help help figure out how to solve it. Uh, security high water teams are already in place, sir, doing a fantastic job. Thank you for your support. We yes, appreciate sir. it. Yes, sir. Making sure you're getting what you need from us. Uh, we can backfill. Uh, we 
we've got a great relation there. Right. I'll hear from the sheriff. I'll hear from you. Don't worry. I got it. Yeah. We've got your lays on. I see a phone call coming. I'm <laughs> ready to get chewed out. I know. So exactly. That's the way to answer it. <laughs> Not true. Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> um, we just, uh, you're going to have a lot of people that don't have uh, blood insurance and through our volunteers in AmeriCorps and many of the volunteer organizations like We Build St. Bernard that still is rebuilding homes, um, those groups will move in to help and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to bridge the gap with some of the materials to some of the donations that are being made. So we're going to reach out, uh, Buddy Bo is with me today, with someone in each parish to help coordinate those efforts. Great, thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I want to thank you, Billy, for traveling with me, too, and it makes a big difference. Uh, Marquita Walters is here from the Department of Children and Family Services, and I know she's got some information for you all. Good afternoon. I know many of you are concerned or wondering about DSNAP and when that's going to happen. We're going to start rolling out next week with the first four parishes. We'll take um, Livingston, St. Helena, and Tangy first, and then draw in Baton Rouge later in the week so we can be clean with that one because that one's kind of big. And then we'll start taking the next wave of parishes either as they were declared or as they have space and dry land and place to put it. So we'll be working out that schedule. We'll post it on the web um, at our louisiana.gov that we're posting everything, keeping the update. There's a lot of confusion about that out there. There's a lot of um, false information on the web, and so if you have people calling mm -hmm. and wanting to know, just you know, tell them to hang on. That we're going to get not to not to see what social media is saying, but to pay attention to what we're saying, and we'll get that posted for you really quick. We will be able to map anywhere that didn't have power, and we'll have the flood maps, and so we'll be able to overlay that. And if any of those residents were people that were already SNAP beneficiaries, we just automatically load their card and they don't have to do anything. If they were people that have never had food stamps and need that assistance now, then they're, we actually met with the feds this afternoon. Governor, we asked them to let Louisiana be the first state ever to um, not have to have people come stand in line, but haven't had a yes yet from that. So we're still working it, but just in case they say no, we'll do it the traditional way, and, but we'll try to make it as seamless as possible for you. If you have any questions about it, I'm happy to talk to you. And Thank if you need any help with any sheltering issues, we're still we're still running shelters too. So let me know. Thank you, Marquita. Uh, Chief Nevers, you, you have anything? All right, I'm gonna. I think it's time for our FEMA guys to speak. Uh, Tony and Jerry, whichever. Yeah. So uh, I think we've got about seventy-three thousand application statewide so that number continues to climb up and that's the right thing to do so that's the first step in the process if people don't register we can't help them i think you've got people in the in the parish now as rick, as rick talked about you've got some of our disaster survivor assistance teams in the shelters not what that's what they're doing uh being able to register individuals uh, some things that we tell you is there will be home inspectors coming out from fema uh, they will have credentials that say fema they won't ask for money uh and once again that's a free service that we do that's what we do as part of our job and if you hear of issues, whether it's in the delivery of individual assistance, public assistance, or in the National Flood Insurance Program, please feed back through Jerry. It will be our federal coordinating officer on the ground here. He will be in Baton Rouge, and he's here for the long haul. We, we've heard the issues before. We're trying to put people out here who will be with you for a long period of time and not, not rotate them in and out. So once again, when you hear issues with us, please let us know so we can take quick action to correct those. Jerry, anything you want to add? We got DSA teams on the ground, and I uh, talked with Rick before the uh, presentation. We'll be working with the state on the location of the PLC. I know you're looking at the location center, and that is absolutely ideal for what uh, we need to do, given the number. I would like to just give you some perspective in terms of flood insurance. The number of policies that are active in the parish is 10,461. Okay. Uh, What's interesting about this is that 35% um, of the housing units in the parish are located in a special flood hazard area. 35%? 35%. 35%. And 
What that means is that the approximate percentage of the population of the parish that have NFIP policies is 29%. Got a little bit of a, a delta there, depending on where, where these uh, where these residents live. But we're tracking. We're going to get some more granularity on the number of policies that um, claims have been submitted on in the parish. We're not quite there yet. Statewide, we have over 15,800 claims that have already been submitted just just for this uh, But. Uh, We'll be working with you very closely. We will have representatives actually embedded here in the parish and building capacity right now up in Baton Rouge. As soon as I get a little bit more, uh, uh, more strength here, we'll be pushing. Um, there is no requirement that anybody pull out their checkbook or their wallet to be assisted by someone who is from FEMA. But there are some scam artists who will dress up and act like they're FEMA people. Make sure you folks know that's not the way that works. And they need to not pay them and they need to report them. We also know that a, at least one flood insurance provider, insurer, is telling people they need to wait until somebody uh, comes and looks at their home before they can start tearing out the damage. That, too, is not correct. You take pictures, you document it, but the longer you leave that wet carpet and those wet drywalls, the more likely you are to have mold, which may not be covered under the policy. And, and it's going to present a long-term problem that would otherwise be much shorter in duration. So that is not a requirement either. And so if y'all would help get that word out, uh, that would be very helpful. Um, we are going to be transitioned, obviously, into uh, recovery. There's going to be a lot of different housing options. You know, some people are going to be able to go back to their homes without much difficulty. Others, it's going to be a little longer. And other, for others, it's still going to be longer yet. We are still coming up with our plan. Uh, you all will know what that plan looks like as soon as we can get you the information. Uh, but we're going to move as expeditiously as we can, uh, but do it as responsibly as we can. Um, and this was mentioned a while ago uh, when we were getting our report about the condition of the levee and pumping water. What happens if something else comes at us? I can tell you that at the state level, tomorrow we are going to have a very serious exercise about how we handle a hurricane given our current posture. I would encourage you all to do that at the parish level because it's not enough to know what you typically do in a hurricane because your assets, your resources, your people, it's all different now. Uh, and you got to know what, where you think you're going to be in 10 days. I don't think we're going to have one before that. Uh, out to 30 days or, or something like that because we're at the height of that hurricane season. And as y'all know from the way we've been tag teamed uh, uh, over the last several years, this is, seems like when it comes at us. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, we're going to do it at the state level. Uh, we're going to encourage you all to do that at the local level. And it's hard to think about that when you haven't caught your breath yet. Um, but it is something that's very important to do. I want to thank y'all for your hard work um, and, and pledge to you that we will continue to do everything possible to get you assistance when you ask for it. Um, and but, but we do need you to ask because if you don't ask, we don't know about it. Um, and, and we're going to continue to try to pull information, but just let us know uh, what you need. And, and we're going to do everything that we possibly can. Uh, I will tell you that, that uh, from my perspective, while there are always lessons to be learned and there's always mistakes that we can correct, um, the big things have been done right. The big things have been done in a timely fashion, and I want to thank y'all. Uh, y'all have excellent leadership here, and I appreciate it. Every group that I talk to, whether it's firefighters, police officers, school teachers, state workers, it seems like 33% uh, is the number. Uh, and, and, uh, and it just so happens that, uh, well, you got about 33% of the people with, with flood insurance, I think is what I heard. I don't know. <laughs> Louisiana has great people. I mean, very resilient, faithful, good people who, who go way out of their way to take care of one another and, and be good neighbors. And uh, so thank you all for, for doing that. As we move forward, this is not going to be a short-term deal, y'all. We, we, we're going to be in it for the long haul. And uh, as soon as we can restore uh, a sense of normalcy, the better. M little things matter getting kids back in school, having football games on Friday night, uh, having an LSU football game on Saturday. Um, all of those things are incredibly important. And so, so I, I look forward to working with you all uh, to get back to a sense of, of, of normalcy here in Ascension and elsewhere around the state. 
and uh, we're not going anywhere. We're, we're going to be partnered with you, and uh, we're going to make the best decisions we can, and we're going to do this as fast as possible. Uh, there are some bureaucratic things that we're going to have to work through. It, you know, it, things don't happen when we snap our fingers. But I will tell you that thus far, I could not have asked for a better relationship with FEMA. Yesterday, the administrator came down, mm -hmm. and on the spot, he approved my request for this parish. Uh, I told you the day before that I thought he would. My fingers were crossed behind my back. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that. <laughs> but, but he did it He did it on the spot. And, and uh, he, he brought up a lot of things that, that he's concerned about uh, with schools, with making sure your first responders, the people who work for the parish, they've got to get their family situated. They've got to get some rest so they can keep working for everybody else. And so we're going to do that as best we can. It is my hope when we leave here that we're going to go, and, and my expectation, we're going to go to Lamar Dixon. Uh, so for, for any of you who want to go there and, and be there whenever we walk through that, I then have to get down uh, into Iberville Parish where we've got a couple of prisons that are, are in a precarious position, one of which has been evacuated, the other one's been partially evacuated, and they're still trying to fight uh, to preserve critical infrastructure there. So that's the plan for the rest of the afternoon before I head back to Baton Rouge. I just want to tell you again how much I appreciate you. The lines of communication are open. Uh, if, you, if you need us, call. And, and if you want us to come back, you let us know to come back, and, and we'll be back here talking to you again. Well, Governor, I just want to thank you for coming and everything you have done in this parish. And I just want to say thank God for Lamar Dixon because I don't know what we would do if we didn't have Lamar Dixon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Mary Lee... You know, she did this with a uh, dream, and it came true. Um, but we appreciate all you've done, and every all the volunteers, the sheriff office, the city police, uh, the, the volunteer firemen have been outstanding. And so, uh, Mr. Sturman, today we were we went through 431. I don't know how many hours a day they gave out lunches, but many hours, many many. I appreciate all of it. Appreciate everything. And Thanks again, uh, Governor. Also, we, we, we echo that. You, you're, I told him, Adam, several weeks ago, in another uh, issue of notoriety and, and crisis in Baton Rouge, and in this situation, and I wouldn't want anybody here to think of my, my, my being quiet, which is a rare <laughs> event, <laughs> Governor, I, would, would be interpreted as uh, me not so overwhelmed. Uh, appreciate it. Every <laughs> one of your, your cabinet heads are personal friends of mine, and I appreciate you considering me when you appointed them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we thank you so much. Uh, there are, so you mentioned the education, there are four or five schools that are out of commission and will be out of commission. Uh, what is that? Probably four or five thousand uh, students, probably 20 percent of our student body. I, and they're tasked with this. I, I don't even know who from, who from FEMA, who from a state agency. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who the people are. Certainly, our our superintendents and board are capable. Uh, what direction do they go in? Well, we actually we're having a meeting today with the state superintendent of education, the school board association, and the superintendents association. Uh, and we've got GOSEP in the room. We've got my office in the room. And we are going to do everything we can to get the assistance necessary to stand these kids up. I mean, I'm sorry, these schools up because until our kids can be back in their schools, our parents are not going to be where they need to be, and your workers are not going to be where they need to be. Uh, and and we we actually th this was a major point of emphasis, unsolicited from Administrator Fugate yesterday. And so we are we are working as hard as we can to figure out, you know, which schools are going to be able to reopen with just minor uh, repairs and work. Which ones are we going to need temporary buildings? Um, you know, which where can we consolidate schools? And, and, and it's, it's, it's not going to be easy, uh, but we're hoping that most schools, uh, the State Department of Education, I'm sorry, the State Superintendent of Education told me at 1 o'clock today he expects most schools in the region to open early next week. There will be some that, for that that's just not going to be possible, and, but, and that, those are the ones we're going to be working on. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.